Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Good afternoon to everyone. I am giving lectures on insurance law. This is my sixth lecture on insurance premium. I am Dr. Naresh Mahipal, Senior Assistant Professor from uh, Faculty of Law, University of Delhi. In my previous lectures, we have discussed about the nature of insurance, functions of insurance historical development of insurance globally as well as in Indian context. Then we have discussed about the concept of insurance. Then what are the elements of insurance and thereafter we have discussed about the insurable risk. In today's lecture, we will discuss about the insurable premium or the consideration amount that is given to get a policy. In this lecture, I will try to cover certain topics such as what insurance premium means with the help of definitions we would try to ascertain the clear meaning of term premium. Then we will discuss about the modes of payment of premium amount that how it can be given, where it can be given. Then we will discuss about the grace period in payment of premium amount and why it is always necessary to pay the premium in time, these all things will be discussed in this lecture. So let us discuss the meaning of insurance premium first of all. Insurance premium is a price that insurer charges from the insured either lump sum or in installments for covering some certain or ascertainable perils or risks. Different types of insurance cover require different premiums based on the degree of risk. In my previous lecture, I have already discussed about the elements of risk such as your age, your occupation, your uh, working, your occupation, your place of living, your heredity. These all are determining factors to underwrite a risk by the insurer company and the premiums could be different based on the different degrees of risks. Let us make it more clear with an example. A policy insuring a house valued at rupees 1 lakh for fire requires a higher premium than one insuring a bike valued at rupees 50,000. You know the value of value difference between both. Although the degree of risk insured might be similar that is the accident. The cost of repairing the house is much higher than the bike and this difference is also seen in the premium paid by the insured to the insurer company. The price of insurance premium may also depend on characteristics of the insured. 
For example, a person having frequent accident record has to pay more for auto insurance than does a person with no accident record. We all know about the no claim bonus. If you have no claim bonus for the last previous years, you have to pay less premium amount for the new renewed policy. The parties insurer and insured are free to decide the rate of premium, but once they agreed and entered into a contract, it becomes conclusive and binding on both parties. It means to say that insured is bound to pay such insurance premium amount that has been agreed and insurer is bound to get it what has been decided between the parties. Insurance companies investigate a number of elements throughout the application process including the type of coverage, the possibility of a claim, the policy holders occupation, his lifestyle, his health conditions and many other factors. These all are elements of risks which are used to determine the insurance premium amount and to, to help the insurance company to underwrite the policy to reject it or to issue it and if the policy is issued to approve the claim or not. Actuaries are employed by insurance companies to do such tasks such as estimating the probability of a claim arising from a severe illness such as cancer, heart attack or other conditions by people of different ages and lifestyles. The cost of insurance premium will increase with the level of risk attached to an occurrence or claim. When it comes to paying their insurance premiums, customers that is the policy holders have several options from insurance providers. The insurance premium can typically be paid in increments by policy holders such as monthly or quarterly or semi-annually or annually or in full before coverage begins. When it comes to non-life insurance policies such as automobile insurance, the yearly premium may be lowered after a year of no claims by the shape of no claim bonus. On the other hand, the premium may increase after a year of claims. If you are claiming it oftenly or every year or if the claim is more in the previous years, then the premium for the next policy may be higher. In order to obtain and maintain an insurance policy and coverage, an individual or business must pay a set of money to the insurance company on a regular basis as premiums. When I say regular basis means without any fault. Insurance companies take a variety of things into account when setting premiums, especially when it comes to life insurance. The likelihood that the policy holder may file a claim, health issues, present or past, smoking and other lifestyle choices, present or past habits, your place of residence, 
conditions of that particular place, type of work you are involved in and other factors are some examples. So, these are certain variables where the companies takes into account when setting the premiums for a particular person or for a group of persons. The insurance premium is what insurance companies make use of it comes to ensuring coverage for all liability linked to the policy. The premium may also be invested by the insurance company in securities for earning returns and covering some of the costs tied to the coverage. Insurance companies also take into account the mortality cost that is the sum insured or the minimum sum payable by the insurance company in the event of death of the policy holder. This is also worked out through accessing the factors mentioned above. The operational costs of insurance companies like the rental of office space, salaries of employees, commissions of agents etc. also determine insurance premiums. Lastly, the interest earned or invested premiums is also taken into account before the premium calculation. So, in order to calculate the premium amount, various variables are taken into consideration, various factors are taken into account such as the rent of office space, salaries of the employees, commission to the agents etc. And apart from the, that, about the policy that the company is proposing to issue, to which age group it will be issued, these all will determine insurance premiums. As can be seen, premium calculation is a multi-layered process depending on several factors, several variables and it varies from one person to another person, one policy to other policy or other group of persons. One should always use a calculator to determine the insurance premium payable on your life insurance policy prior to choosing the same or renewing it every year. These calculators are available on most of the websites of the insurers that is the insurance companies It help you to determine what premium you need to pay as per your age group, your working profile and your health conditions etc. and you are in a better position to bargain or to choose a good policy for you. There is one important landmark judgment that is LIC versus Anamma in 1999. The court held that mere silence after receipt and retention of premium cannot be construed as acceptance. A contract is formed when the insurer accepts the premium and retains it. So, when you are sending a proposal form to the company along with the payment of receipt, it does not mean that company has accepted it and a valid contract has been entered into between the parties. It is only formed when the insurer accepts your premiums and retain is and underwrite the policy and issue it to you. In the case of Life Insurance Corporation of India and another versus Sunita in 2019, it was held that this insurance claim is liable to be rejected if the premium was not paid on the due date. So, it is always important to pay your premium well in time 
of course there is a provision of grace period that we will discuss about but it is always advisable that if you are in a condition then always pay the premium well in time it will help you to retain some benefits of that. In Vikram Green Tech Limited versus New India Assurance Company Limited 2009, Apex Court observed that from the aforesaid legal position, it is clear that terms of insurance policy have to be strictly construed and it is not permissible to rewrite the contract while interpreting the terms of the policy. In the instant con case, condition number 11 of the policy clearly stipulated that policy has to be in force when the accident takes place. So, we have to go through certain conditions that are imposed in the policy documents itself and especially we must be vigilant about the payment of the premium amount so that the policy is kept alive and we can get the benefits if any unfortunate events happen. Now, let us make it more clear about the term insurance premium with the help of some definitions. In Lucena versus Crawford, a very landmark judgment of 1806, Justice Lawrence defined premium as a, a price paid adequate to the risk. A very short definition, but very, you know, very enlarged one. It has some meaning in it that a price paid adequate to the risk. The Macmillan Dictionary defines premium as a regular payment made to an insurance company so that you are protected by the insurance. The National Insurance Company Limited, a government of India undertaking, defines premium as premium is fixed amount of sum paid over the period by insured to insurer in order to secure an insurance policy and to complete the contract of insurance. So, it is very important to understand that premium is fixed amount of sum paid over the period by insured to insurer in order to secure an insurance policy and to complete the contract of insurance. Premium is very important. Consideration is important part to conclude a legal contract. According to E. W. Peterson, insurance is a contract by which one party for a compensation called the premium assumes particular risk of the other party and promises to pay to him or his nominee a certain or ascertainable sum of money on a specified contingency. Very elaborated definition that company gets the insurance premium from the insured and in return it promises to him that in the event of any contingency a promised money will be given to the insured or to his nominee. According to Macmillan dictionary, regular payment made to an insurance company so that you are protected by insurance. National Insurance Company defines premium as premium is fixed amount of sum paid over the period by insured to the insurer in order to secure an insurance policy and to complete the contract of insurance. So, these certain definitions helps us to understand the insurance premium the value of insurance premium that it should be paid well in time and it helps in concluding the legal contract between the parties. And obviously, that premium amount is calculated on various variables such as age, your occupation, the way of living, your habits, the place of dwelling, whether you are working in hazardous occupations or not, 
these all are calculating factors and uh, other factors such as uh, you have previously claimed uh, in the previous years or not, uh, uh, what is your uh, lifestyle, what is your working style, this all will decide to calculate the premium amount. Now, let us discuss the modes of payment of premium, how the premium can be paid, where the premium can be paid and under what circumstances the premium must be paid. Payment of premium can be made monthly, quarterly, semi-yearly or yearly basis depending upon the policy to policy or the same insurer, insurer to insurer or as agreed between the insurer and the insured. So, it is left open to the parties to decide whether the policy will be premium will be paid monthly or quarterly, semi-annually or annually and it could be different from person to person. Maybe the policy is one, but it could be different from person to person also. Generally, the premium is paid in cash, but it is up to the insurer to accept the payment in any other form such as check, credit card, post, promissory note or a bill of exchange. It may be paid by settling the accounts also. Payments can also be made to the authorized agent of the insurer. To secure the lowest overall cost of your life insurance, pick a less frequent mode of premium payment. Preferably it should be yearly basis. Ignoring other considerations, the annual costs of less frequent payment modes are often substantially discounted when compared to more frequent modes. Do not forget to consider two factors while deciding to pay the premiums that is opportunity costs and liquidity. Your liquidity is the amount of cash you have ready to make premium payments. If you have only rupees 500 in the bank to say, let us take an example, if you have only rupees 500 in the bank, it is probably unwise to choose a rupees 5000 annual premium payment option. So, that is very determinative factor to calculate whether the policy premium will be paid frequently or not. Insurance premium payment is important to ensure the timely benefits for a life insurance plan. Insurance providers have offered various flexible features to customize the saving insurance plan to your advantage. Companies have provided various features, various way outs to decide upon you by that what type of period is better for you to pay the premium amount without any default. One such option is the premium payment option. There are regular, single and limited premium payment options. You can pay the premium regularly through the policy tenure. You can make a single payment during inception or for a limited term of the policy tenure based on your financial commitments. Analyze your personal finances and make the right choice that what is the best time or what is that uninterrupted time when you can pay the policy premium amount without any fail. There are various modes of payments of insurance premiums to make our life more easy, some of which are as following. Number one, you can choose to make payment at branch office of the insurance company. It is one of the simplest and popular method of 
payment of premium. Policy holders can directly pay the premium amount through cash or check as it is taken by the branch office. Second mode of payment of insurance premium is payment through banks or agents. This is second popular method. Some insurance companies have tie up with specific banks where policy holders can pay premium. Payment can also be made to authorized insurance agents of the insurer. They will deposit that amount in the branch office or wherever it has been authorized for them and uh, in return they will issue a premium receipt to you. Third popular method is payment through websites. Nowadays payment as online through the insurance company's website is one of the popular methods of premium payment. Almost all the insurance companies offer their payment service to its policy holders where one can pay his premium amount by his internet banking account or by way of credit cards. Another method is electronic clearing system that is also called as ECS system. ECS is an automated simplest and one of the most convenient facility for premium payment which debits premium from specified bank account of the insured to the insurer's specified account on due date of the payment of premium. There you need not to keep the record of the dates when the premium policy should be paid when you are having more than one policies. It is always difficult to remember the dates of due premium. In that situation, ECS facilities helps you. Some more important benefits of ECS payment are that one need not to remember the due dates, no queue ups for depositing checks or cash in banks or branch offices. You need not to take any holiday for that. You need not to take a break for that and to queue up in the offices to pay the premium amount and to carry the cash etc with you. Another important and uh, popular is credit card standing instruction. It is another mode of insurance premium payment prevalent these days which enables the auto debit of the premium from credit card on due date. It is similar to that of ECS. Difference is that in ECS system money is deducted automatically from your bank account and deposited in the insurer's bank account whereas in credit card system it will be deducted from your credit card system and deposited to the insurer company's account. Sixth mode of payment is your bill desk. It is online method of insurance premium payment. For using this facility one has to register with bill desk and choose its biller insurance company. Seventh easy method of depositing the premium amount is easy bill outlet. Through availing this option, the insured can pay his insurance premium at any specific designated nearest outlet branch or office for premium collection called the easy bill outlet. There you can pay the premium amount and another option to pay the premium amount is drop box as we have seen these things in the banks also drop box is the box specifically designed by the insurance companies for the convenience of its customers it is a system by which the customer can drop his check of amount of his insurance premium at any drop box of his insurance company. So these are certain methods, these are certain ways through which you can deposit the premium amount 
at any of the stipulated p place or within any method. Now let us discuss something about grace period in premium payment. The foremost requirement of an insurance contract is that you pay the premium amount in due time without any fail. But if you fail to do so in certain circumstances, in that situation, what will happen to you? Whether your policy expires, whether it is still alive, if you are paying it at regular intervals for the last so many years without any default, but this time you fail to do so, in that situation, what will be the fate of that insurance policy? Let us discuss it by way of grace period in premium payment. In insurance law, grace period is a period of time in which a late performance may be made without penalty. So it is very much clear that the companies has given you some grace period to pay the amount, defaulted amount without any penalty for that. It provides the opportunity to the customer over and above due date to make the payment for the renewal premium without lapsing the insurance policy. This is very good feature that has been provided by the companies so that your policy may not lapse and you are not out of the reach of the benefits of the policy which you have been maintaining for last so many times, so many years without any fail. It is an extra time window given to the customer to make the payment to keep the policy in good standing just in case he forgets to make the payment or he is not in a position, he is financially constrained at that time to make the payment in time or require some more time to arrange the money. That period is called as the grace period. It varies from various policy to policy and companies to companies. It could be 15 days or it could be 30 days. LIC website suggests that the grace period for policies where the premium payment mode is monthly is 15 days from the due date. The grace period for policies where the premium payment mode is quarterly, half yearly or yearly is one month but not less than 30 days. It has been kept open to the companies to decide whether it should be 30 days or more you can say. The policy remains in force throughout this period that is the grace period. However, it is not the duty of the insurer to demand for payment of the premium. But in general practice, a notice of demand is sent to the insured asking him to make the payment. It may be electronically or it may be through your postal address, but a notice of demand is made by the companies generally, although it is not the duty, it is not liability of the companies to remind you to make the premium payment. But if no notice is sent or lost by an accident or postal delay, it is not a defense to set up by the insured for non-payment of the premium. So it is your liability or duty to pay the premiums at the regular interval or at least during the grace period. It is a privilege of the insurer to include such grace period clause in its policy. If the policy is silent on such issue, the assured is neither entitled to grace period nor can he claim it. So it is a privilege that rests with the insurance company to decide whether to provide a grace period clause in the policy document or not. You cannot claim it as a matter of right. However, in certain circumstances, the 
insurer's conduct can stop or prevent the insurer from claiming that the policy has lapsed for non payment of premium the insurer by its conduct can also waive the right to claim that the policy is no longer in force due to the failure to pay the premiums the waiver of the right to assert the forfeiture of the policy for non payment of premiums happens when the insurer expressly or impliedly leads the insured to believe that insurer has relinquished such right the best feature of the grace period is that policy continues to remain in full force during the grace period without any of the benefits reducing and the payment of the premium made without grace period will be deemed to be made on the due date this is the best feature of the grace period that your policy continues with all the features with all the benefits that has been paid by way of insurance premium let us take an example for that to make it more clear a car insurance company provides for 15 days grace period if the car insurance premium is due on first day of the month the car insurance will continue to be effective until the 15th day of the month even if the premium is not paid it will be effective full in force after that day non payment of the premium causes the policy to lapse during the early period the policy lapsing due to non payment of the premium resulted in forfeiture of the premium already paid but as the time passed the courts realizing the needs of security and protection to the poorer not only lean liberally in the favor of the insured but also started interpreting the forfeiture clause of the policy in favor of the insured so in earlier stages when you default once or you are not in a position to pay the premium amount to say after 2 3 or 5 years the whole amount was forfeited by the company but now maybe there is a lock in period for that but after that the companies will give you some insurance amount that has been deposited by you back after deducting few costs but it cannot retain the whole amount it cannot forfeit the premium already paid for so long in reserve bank of india versus peerless general investment company 1987 justice chinappa reddy observed this proposition which is reproduced as below that what is important is that if the policy holder commits default and does not pay any one of the first three premiums the premiums already paid automatically stands forfeited to the lic entitling the policy holders to no benefits since it is the poorer classes that may ordinarily be expected to commit default in payment of the premium consideration the forfeiture clause in practice operates harshly specifically against that oppressed class the very class which requires greater security and protection so this is a landmark judgment in favor of the insured persons especially to the poorer classes of the policy holders who are expected to pay or to default in such kind of grace periods also further observed that the lic of india and instrumentality of the state which is given the monopoly of life insurance business in the country has taken no steps to offer proper security and protection to the needy poor rural folks if the lic is really interested in treating the poorer policy holders 
less harshly and move liberally. The time has come for the LIC to review its terms and conditions and to think in the direction of deleting the four feature clause altogether as has now been done by the peerless company or to delete it at least for policies for small accounts for the poorer peoples who very difficultly manage to pay the premium amounts in time and if in any condition they are not able to retain that policy after for few years the forfeiture clause should not be harshly used against the policy holders. In fact, grace period is an honest intention of the insurer to provide an opportunity to the assured to pay the premium after the due date in order to prevent the lapsing of insurance policy or reduction of any policy benefits. If an insurer had accepted a payment and deposited the check without following its normal review process and that clearly knew that the policy had lapsed when the payment was received has waived the right to claim forfeiture of the policy due to non-payment. The length of the insurance grace period varies based on the policy the person has subscribed to. It may range from 24 hours to 30 days. The grace period is specified in the insurance policy agreements and late payments may result in additional fees in the form of penalties. But these penalties cannot be imposed during the grace period. The time allotted for the policy holder to pay the premium in order to prevent coverage lapses is known as the insurance grace period. Depending on the insurer and kind of coverage, the provider may change the grace period. This we have already discussed about that what is the duration of the premium payment to say if it is monthly the grace period could be 15 days and if it is biannually or annually it could be 30 days. So many factors will decide the grace period but now the companies have been given the instructions to provide a grace period clause in almost every policies that are issued by the insurers. Insurance grace periods shield policy holders, it protects the policy holders, it is benefits the policy holders from the immediate loss of coverage in case they delay the payment of premiums. So you are covered fully during the grace periods. If you have defaulted for one day or two and something happens to you, it does not mean that you are out of the policy coverage, you are fully entitled to get the premium uh, policy benefits as the premium has been paid that shall be deemed to be paid during the period of grace period. Insurance grace period depends on the type of policy the subscriber holds and are monitored and managed by a regulator. However, many issuers still drop their policy holders immediately on defaults without any prior notice. But the trend of the courts is against such kind of companies who do not provide the grace periods to the policy holders. We can say that the insurer is responsible for paying the policy holders for any services that they are eligible for as long as the insurance grace period is still active. There are no exceptions to state that the company will have to cover for the damages in a cancelled policy due to non-payment. In such cases, 
one might be required to start the entire process from scratch meaning you might be required to subscribe to the insurance policy again the insurance grace period is extra time provided by the insurance providing company if the policy holder is unable to pay the premiums on time this ensures that the insurance policy does not get lapsed and the policy holder gets to enjoy the insurance policy's benefits in full during the grace period you will get all such benefits as you are enjoying before the payment of the premium amount during the policy while most insurance companies offer a 30 day grace period it is essential to confirm the specific duration with your provider as i told you if your premium payment method is monthly it could be 15 days so you have to check it out from your insurance provider that is the company that is the insurer to check out what is the limit of the grace period some companies may have variations utilizing the grace period wisely can prevent policy lapses so it is always advisable to use the grace period when there is some financial constraint with you or if you forget by chance to deposit the due payment at that time if you are financially stable it is always advisable to adopt for ECS system timely payments during this period can save one from potential financial and coverage related complications your policy will not lapse since most insurance applications often require to mention if you have ever cancelled a policy you are most likely to be labeled as high risk customer in the case of any prior cancellations of your policy also the insurance company might attract higher premiums on your policy so if you default over and over again in your policies if one policy is issued to you and you are not keeping it alive thereafter you are getting another policy not keeping it alive and so on what it will create an impression in the mind of the new insurer that you are a high risk customer right and this might attract higher premiums in the new policy what about the return of premium if you fails to sustain the policy whether your whole amount should be forfeited or whether the part of the premium to be paid what is the condition related to that let us discuss about it generally the premium once paid cannot be asked to be refunded not even when the insured is unable to enforce his insurance policy but it may be agreed between the parties that is the insurer and the insured before entering into contract to return premium wholly or partly on the happening of certain events this could be a condition it depends upon policy to policy and from company to company the total premium would be refundable if there is no fault or illegality committed by the insured or if the policy is void or where the object is illegal no premium amount will be forfeited the whole premium will be returned to you if the policy is void or if it is unlawful the object is illegal or the illegality has been committed by the 
insurer. Some provisions of the Indian contract are to be discussed to determine about the premium return. Section 64 in the Indian Contract Act 1872, it provides that consequences of recession of a verdable contract. It says that when a person at whose option a contract is voidable resigns it, the other party thereto need not to perform any pr promise therein contained in which he is the promiser. The party resigning avoidable contract shall, if he had received any benefit thereunder from another party to such contract, restore such benefit so far as may be to the person from whom it was received. Section 65 of the Contract Act, it provides for obligation of person who has received advantage under void agreement or contract that becomes void. What is the provision related to that those who are getting advantage of the void agreement? It says that when an agreement is discovered to be void or when a contract becomes void, any person who has received any advantage under such void agreement or contract is bound to restore it or to make compensation for it to the person from whom he received it. So, this is very important section 65 that provides the obligation over the voids agreement. Let us discuss some circumstances in which the risk is never run, where the premiums are to be returned. In below mentioned circumstances, it will be considered that risk never run and the insurer is required to return premium that has been received by it. Number one, where before the policy comes into force, the subject matter of insurance ceases to be in existence. Secondly, where subject matter is wrongly described, the company is required to return premium received. Thirdly, where the insured has never any insurable interest in the subject matter. Fourthly, where the policy issued is ultra wires the company. Where the policy is void on account of some illegality. Where the policy is void on account of some breach of a condition precedent which has been already decided between the parties, where the insurance is avoided by the insurers on the ground of breach of warranty, the premium can only be recovered back if it is shown that there was a breach ab initio. From the very inception, from the very beginning, there is a breach of that. Section 56 is also important to discuss what it says about the agreement to do impossible act. It provides that an agreement to do an act impossible in itself is void. Contract to do afterwards becoming impossible or unlawful. A contract to do an act which after the contract is made becomes impossible or by reasons of some event which the promiser could not prevent unlawful becomes void when the act becomes impossible or unlawful. Another important doctrine is doctrine of frustration to my mentioned. The principle of frustration of contract is contained in section 56. The principle underlying the section is that performance of contract can be avoided if on account of happening of an event which is not the result of action of either party the performance of contract may be avoided. The doctrine of frustration as embodied in section 56 of the contract act may apply if before mentioned three conditions satisfies. Number one, a valid and subsisting contract between parties. There must be some part of the contract yet to be performed. And thirdly, the contract after it is made 
becomes impossible. The doctrine of frustration is applicable only where performance of contract becomes impossible. We can discuss cases on that also. In Prabhumal Gulamal versus Baburam Basesar Das, it was held that the agreements were void to the knowledge of both parties at the time they were made and it cannot therefore be said that it was discovered to be void. Or when a contract becomes void, any person who has received any advantage under such agreement is bound to restore it. In Srinivas Iyer versus Sesha Iyer, Justice Blackwell observed that the words discovered to be void are more apt to describe an agreement which was void ab initio but not then known to the parties to be so then and to an agreement of which illegally must be taken to have been always known to them. So why it is important to pay premiums on time? It is imperative that all policy holders make their premium payments on schedule. Even when the insurance company grants a grace period, there are still a number of drawbacks to not paying the premiums. Let us look at a few of the reasons why paying your premiums on time is so important. Number one, loss of assured cover provided to the policy holder. In case the policy holder is unable to pay the premiums, even after the insurance plus grace period is provided, it will result in lapsation of the insurance policy. As a result, you will face a loss of the assured sum or cover that was to be provided by the insurance provider. Second, high renewal cost. If the insurance coverage will be terminated and you are unable to make timely premium payments, the policy holder may be required to pay penalty in order to have policy renewed. Thirdly, we do not know when we might get diagnosed with a critical illness such as cancer etc. In such cases, insurance policies will add on critical health rider benefits ensure that we do not face any financial hassle and can focus on our recovery with peace of mind. Fourthly, when we are young, healthy and earning, it is easier to invest in an insurance policy. However, in case the policy holder fails to pay the premium, it leads to the lapsation of policy and it might create a hassle and inconvenience for the policy holder to invest in a new insurance policy at a later stage. So, concludely, we can say that an insurance premium is the amount of money an individual or business must pay for an insurance policy. Insurance premiums are paid for policies that cover healthcare, etc. Failure to pay the premium on the part of individual or the business may result in the cancellation of policy and loss of coverage. Some premiums are paid quarterly, monthly or semi-annually depending on the policy and shopping around for insurance may help you find affordable premiums. I am sure that through this lecture on premium, you are able to get about the method of payment of premium and why the premium of payment at time is essential. A very thanks to you for listening to me.